Hello, I'm High Heel Knight. Welcome to my channel. These are my first impressions of WWE Evolution 2018, the first ever all women's pay per view hosted by World Wrestling Entertainment. And I use the air quotes of all women because a large reason why this pay per view was created was in response to the greatest Royal Rumble pay per view, which took place in Saudi Arabia, in which no women were allowed to perform in any state, form, or capacity, at least on screen. Obviously, backstage is probably another thing, but still, at least on screen, uh, no female matches, not even uh, people that was coming out as a valet, couldn't be on commentator, couldn't do anything on screen. So, we're in this event, even though all the competitors are women, Michael Cole is on the announce team. The internationalized team is still all men. Uh, Triple H was there to award the winner of the Mae Young Classic. And some of the male tag team partners of women that are in the Mixed Match Challenge where they're in the audience. So, you know, that's why I'm using the air quotes of uh, all women's pay-per-view. Uh, but aside from that, it was a great show from top to bottom. Uh, I was very uh, concerned about the show because the WWE was trying to promote Evolution while at the same time promoting Crown Jewel, which is their next show in Saudi Arabia, which is also going under through several problems because of uh, political reasons. Uh, and like with, and there's issues with John Cena. There's new issues with Roman Reigns, and even with the Evolution uh, card itself. Uh, the first first match announced for the show was Trish Stratus versus Alexa Bliss. And then that match became a tag team match player, and then uh, that match uh, still happened. But Alexa Bliss had to be on the sidelines because she suffered a, a, an injury. So, you know, right off the bat, <laughs> what's going on with the show? And even the NXT Women's Championship, which apparently uh, was awarded and taped about uh, a couple of weeks ago, and there is an NXT oh, UK Women's Champion. <laughs> so many uh, letters. Uh, but she was in the audience along with other ladies that are part of the uh, United Kingdom brand. Uh, there were certain, uh, several ladies from the NXT brand in the audience, but no, no NXT UK Women's Championship <laughs> defense on the show, and as far as I know, they haven't even mentioned that that uh, title has officially been created, they haven't aired any of those episodes, so yeah, I was like, okay, so what's going to happen on this program, they don't think they even announced a pre-show match, so I didn't watch the pre-show, as far as I knew, there wasn't a pre-show match, and I wasn't even sure the Mae Classic final was going to happen, because if you watch the Mae Classic, they say it's going, the finals are on Evolution, but if you watch Raw or SmackDown, they don't didn't mention it all during the run down of the card. So aside from all that, again, very good show, very entertaining show. There were surprising moments, but there were no major surprises. You know, there was like if you watch wrestling for at least half as long as I have, or maybe a quarter as long as I have, you can pretty much uh, reasonably predict who's going to win what. And for the most part, yeah, I, everything that uh, every person I figured was going to win wound up winning. But still, I wasn't disappointed. The matches were very exciting. I was very impressed by the Riot Squad because, quite frankly, they haven't really been shown as a major credible threat on Raw. But here, they finally uh, came into their came into the moment and shine. Lots of freaking ties and things like that. So that was very entertaining, and exciting. I was very surprised that Trish Stratus and Lita's match was the first match. Uh, on the one hand, you want to start to pay per view all strong and exciting, and that uh, match was definitely strong, definitely exciting. Uh, but at the same time, they were giving it away for free on Twitter and social media. So it's like, well, okay, but that's a signature match and a lot of people. That's the only match they want to see. So how likely are they going to buy the rest of the uh, pay per view or the WWE Network if they've seen the main match they want to see? Uh, that that match is going to be like uh, past versus present, but I like to think of it more as a wh what year is this uh, match? <laughs> Trish Stratus and Lita versus Alicia Fox and Mickey James in 2018. I mean, <laughs> come on, but uh, really uh, exciting show. Uh, the Battle Royale was wonderful. Uh, the finals of the Mayon Classic was wonderful. Really enjoyed that match. I was. It took a little while for the crowd to get into it because, again, uh, you got to watch 
the network to be really behind and familiar with these ladies. And uh, the average WWE person probably doesn't really know. But once the crowd got into it, it was really nice. Uh, see, yeah, it was a pretty solid show. Now, when it comes to the main event, I was disappointed that Nikki Bella versus Ronda Rousey was the main event. Now, granted, I understand from a marketing standpoint, it makes sense. I mean, whatever you think of the Bellas, they are the top stars as far as females in the WWE. They got you know the reality programs. They got social media presence. Uh, nothing, and they do have a long standing with the company. They were part of the whole. Well, let's just hire a bunch of cute models and eventually teach them to wrestle. To no, let's hire some uh, excellent female athletes that can definitely wrestle or at least uh, are likely to learn wrestling and hopefully they look really good on camera as well. So they definitely belong on the card, but they don't belong in the main event, especially when they're going against Ronda Rousey. No one believes that Nikki Bell is a credible threat to Ronda Rousey and they will take all type of super duper <laughs> shenanigans. Uh, you would have to the spirit of penalty every evil chicken in the book in order for Nikki Bella to possibly win. Uh, but the match itself was very good. And surprisingly, the show was over three hours. Normally, the show was from 7 p.m. to 10 p.m. Uh, Eastern Standard Time. This went from 7 p.m. to about 10, 20-ish, 10, 25. So let's say, you know, 10, you know, 10 30, followed immediately by uh, the House Hardy Halloween. So if you're a fan of uh, the Broken Matt Hardy gimmick, definitely check out <laughs> that out also as well. But yeah, the, the, the match itself, Ronda Rousey versus Nikki Bella, yeah, it was a good match, very good match, very entertaining match, but it didn't belong in the main event, uh, especially considering that the match before it was Charlotte Flair versus Becky Lynch. That should have been the main event. First of all, uh, Charlotte Flair and Becky Lynch, they came up from NXT, which is pretty much how all new stars come through. You start in NXT, you build up your skills, you build up a brain, you build up your presence, and then come on to the main roster. And uh, that's definitely what those ladies did. They have a history of both being friends and antagonists to each other. So that's that uh, storyline, long-term storyline. And, of course, the media storyline with Becky Lynch turning heel, even though the crowd loves her. Uh, you know, that story itself is much stronger than, oh, Nikki Bella wants to beat Ronda Rousey just because it will get her some extra attention on the, on the social media and stuff like that. You know, it's a much stronger story. And it's the last woman standing match. And to follow up, I'll say a last person standing match. This has only been, uh, despite this whole first ever last woman standing match, it's not the first ever if you count NXT. There was a NXT last woman standing match. But anyway, last person standing match are almost impossible to follow, okay? You know, you'd have to be, uh, you know, on the caliber of, you know, Shawn Michaels versus Rey Mysterio or something like that in order to follow up a last person standing match. So the simple fact that you had a last person standing match on the card, that should have been the main event. So considering the participants of, the, of that match in the match itself, that match should have been the main event. It was tremendous. It turned into an impromptu TLC match because they got uh, tables, ladders, and chairs all were involved in the match. Kendall Stitcher were involved in the match. Uh, there was an amazing uh, spot where they tried to break a table, and it was just truly amazing. Uh, the only thing I didn't like about that match, and this is inherent into a lot of last person standing match, is that there were a couple of times when Charlotte Flair was still on her knees, still down, but the referee declares her as being up, even though she's clearly still down. So when at the finish, when she actually is Technically, on both feet, the referee still <laughs> saying that she's not down. That, that's a, a real problem with the uh, last person standing matches that uh, the referee claims the person up or down, even though, you know, like, it's not consistent. But other than that, truly wonderful, excellent match. Uh, should have been the main event. But the whole card itself, wonderful, top to bottom. I thoroughly enjoyed it. So, you know, if you want to check out the show... And don't mind that this all women's pay per view isn't really technically all women, <laughs> uh, and you'll you'll really like the show. Okay, <laughs> so I definitely recommend WWE Evolution 2018, something that will hopefully be some type of annual showcase. <laughs>
All right. Thank you very much for watching. I greatly appreciate it. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe, or dislike, share, and subscribe. Once again, I'm High Hill Knight, and remember, find inspiration everywhere.